You're listening to the Study Clicks podcast, your number one source for junior and leaving cert tips. We make exams easier. Welcome back to another episode of the Study Clicks podcast. This episode is a really good one because me and Ema are not alone this week and talking our usual spiels, Ema in particular. And what? we, <laughs> sorry, just went straight for the juggler in the first like so 30 rude. seconds of the podcast. But we're really lucky to be joined by Aoife, who is StudyClix's content manager, among loads of other things. And she's also our expert in Irish. So welcome to the podcast, Aoife. Thanks for having me. Woohoo! Welcome. <laughs> we're very excited to have a guest. We haven't had a guest in so we long. Love it when we can talk to someone else. <laughs> We keep promising people that we'll have guests and then we never do it. And then we're finally, finally got there. So, yeah, um, I think a lot of people have been waiting for this podcast for a while. Irish is something that everyone has to do other than a couple of people who are exempt. So it's definitely relevant for all those fifth and sixth years out there. Um, if you're younger than fifth or sixth year, then you can definitely keep listening if you want some tips. We'll probably talk about some general Irish learning stuff anyway. So if it could be relevant for junior cert. But generally, this this podcast is for fifth and sixth years. Yeah, I know people can really struggle with Irish and it's something that is brought up again and again about like how it's taught in schools and it just language in general. It's it's a tough language, like grammar in particular. There is so much stuff that you can easily fall down on. Um, but we're going to go through the entire course today. Aoife's going to take us through. She's going to give her best tips. She got a H1 and we're going to do our best to make sure that you can get the best result that you can possibly get to. So keep listening. Yeah, and Nessa and I can chime in as well. We are both from a Gaeltacht area, but we're just annoying <laughs> Gaeltacht who don't actually speak the language properly. We, we can chime in as well, but Aoife is definitely our expert here on this one. So I think to start us off, Aoife, you were mentioning earlier before we started recording that um, it's kind of interesting, the, the layout of the paper and the course and how much of it actually is studied and not studied. Yeah, for sure. I think Irish is kind of one of those daunting subjects just because I know you've been studying it for years, like 14 years since junior infants, you've been learning it. But I feel like, you know, sometimes it's not taught properly. You might get a bad start with a bad teacher. And then, you know, from then on, you'll always hate it. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of one of those things. You put a lot of work into it and, you know, you'd be okay. So 67% of the paper is stuff you're actually not meant to study for. So yeah, that is in itself very daunting. Yeah, for some students, oh, great, I don't have to study for 70% of this exam. But yeah, it is interesting. But I definitely don't think there's any point in disregarding it altogether just because you find it hard or you don't like it. The exam itself actually isn't that difficult to do well in and people generally tend to do better than they actually expect. Yeah. So 40% of your exam is your oral exam. So that's actually, you know, 40% you can pass the whole exam by just doing okay in your oral exam and then if you do like mediocre in the rest of your exam you know you know that you've done a good oral exam so you're kind of covered so yeah 40% that's a huge chunk of your marks then moving on you have 10% of your exam is listening again it can be difficult but if you practice it it's really not that bad and then on top of that on top of the rest of the unseen stuff is your um comprehension which is about 17 percent of your exam but like five out of six questions for the comprehension you copy word for word from the text so you know it definitely is doable and you shouldn't really be scared by it so you know when you put it into perspective it's not that bad yeah once you break it down like that it's not as bad i think i think i suppose what scares a lot of people and what definitely scared me when i was doing it was the oral 100 percent, just <laughs> such nerves of talking to anyone who wasn't someone i knew and then yeah i think the essays catch people as well just because they have to be around three or four pages. And if Irish just isn't your strong suit, like you were saying, it's it's essentially the fact that 67% of it isn't studied. It sort of means that you just have to know Irish yeah. and have to be kind of good enough at it that you can write three pages without studying it. That's a big ask for people who, uh, you know, didn't grow up in a Gaeltacht area or didn't enjoy it in primary school or didn't even have it in primary yeah. school, for example, you know. Um, so those are the biggest areas to tackle and we will tackle them in a moment. We'll get down deeper into those specific areas. Um, well, I suppose to start off the the oral exam, we're not going to talk about that much in this podcast because we have a specific podcast dedicated to that specifically. Um, so if you just came to the podcast to listen to about the oral exam, then do check out the Bail Trill one that myself and Nessa have recorded. 
earlier it was more than a year ago at this stage now so is it but it's it's one of the first ones we wrote so you'll have to or one of the first ones that we recorded so you'll have to scroll yeah, all the way but down it's to there and it, it's but... definitely relevant and helpful so it's there go check that out. um <laughs> Yeah, so we're not going to talk about the oral, but then I suppose the first thing that you would be confronted with on the exam is the listening section. Do you want to take us? Yeah, so the listening section is kind of the first exam you'll sit on kind of, apart from obviously your oral exam, which, you know, you did back in April time. But yeah, so your oral exam is worth 60 marks out of your 600. Um, So it's 10% of your total exam. So it's definitely worth putting time and effort into it because, you know, 10% is, you know, it's a huge chunk of your marks. So I suppose one of the main things to remember at your listening exam, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I can't study for it. I can't learn something off. I can't learn off what something means. It's kind of, you know, it is unpredictable. So people, you know, don't go Mm. near it. They say, oh, I'll get what I get. But, you know, that's actually not the case at all. I was terrible at listening back at um, junior cert level and in first year. And I found all the different conunts in Irish. All the dialects. Yeah, the dialect. And they're really difficult to understand. And I obviously found the Donegal one really <laughs> difficult to understand. Like they literally say things in different ways. They have different ways of saying everything. And it is totally confusing. And it, it well, I, like in first year, that was impossible for me. So I think that one of my teachers in first year, I remember her saying that, you know, practice 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 and you'll do better than you know you'll you'll really improve and she was telling us that like the people the voices on the exam so from the state exam commission Mm. the people who do the voice they're actually the same year on year so you can actually get used to the way someone's speaking and then I remember on the day of the exam this man I think he had like Connemara Irish or something um and I remember his voice because I'd been practicing it and practicing it. Aww. And then on the day of the exam, I felt like I knew him. Do you know? My friend. <laughs> and like I, his voice came up and I remember thinking, oh my God, he sounds familiar. Like I know this man. Um, so yeah, it is totally much easier to understand if you're used to the way someone, you know, talks, the way they say certain words. That's so true. I remember because it's, it's the thing that everyone like dreads the Donegal person comes up on the tape because they do come up every year like yeah, it's guaranteed and I remember practicing it in class and like getting one question wrong and it was just like oh where is this competition taking place and the answer answer was like Guidor which is obviously like famous girls out in Donegal but I had no idea how to spell it I spelled it like G-W-E-E like how it was phon- phonetically pronounced in English yeah. And I, I remember thinking, oh, God, I have to remember that's a place and spell like how I would pronounce it as Guador. And I remember just like that sticking in my head and it actually came up in my own leaving cert then, the same Gwailtuk area. Yeah. In, and it was the same. It was the answer to a question as well. So um, it is it repeats itself a lot. Yeah, there's like there's tips and tricks that, uh, for things that kind of show, show up again and again like that um what you were saying that they tend to always talk like it's a radio ad and it's talking about a summer course that's happening in a Gaelic area so you can definitely study for the listening exam even though you're saying you felt like many people don't but you can like familiarize yourself with the name of Gaelic because they tend to come up and how you spell them spelling is actually quite important for the listening exam you get uh. doc marks if you don't spell things properly um but like also the same thing goes, I'm sure we have some Donegal listeners who are like, yeah, well, what about the monster accent? That's crazy. <laughs> Your dialect is <laughs> which, <stupid. laughs> which is also as in like, and I think that's so funny about the Irish uh, language that it, uh, it is so different. Like our mom is from Donegal. Uh-huh. And um, I remember I always thought like, oh, I, I can do that pro- part, no problem because my mom's from Donegal. But then I realized actually she never speaks Irish with us because she was bullied out of it when she moved yeah. to Cork. Yeah. <laughs> like so everyone just said, made fun. Yeah. So like um But like even if I went if I'm from Dublin, so say I went down to Kerry and heard someone in Kerry speak English, you know, there's certain things that they'll say I won't understand yeah. and I'll be like, Come again, come again and that's in English. So like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's the exact same in Irish. If you're not used to someone's um pronunciations of things, you know, you can get cut out. But it is just about practice and getting used to it, I suppose. And you know, if you actually break the oral exam down it's actually easier to study than you think. There's three sections. The first two are advertisements, the second two are conversations, and then the third section, you're listening to two news pieces. So like, if you familiarise yourself with the vocabulary that comes up in an ad for the fogra, you know, Dota Derinok, that comes up every single year, the deadline or the date you have to have the application in for, or whatever. So just like, the same vocab is coming up year on year for the ads, so obviously for part B, then you have your conversations. And yeah, that is definitely diff- more difficult to kind of prepare for because, you know, it's more general. But then like for the news statements, there's always job advertisements. 
the incidents happening, fires, floods, getting used to words like that come up year on year. And whoever writes the exam, they tend to go back, maybe have a look at like 2002's paper and be like, oh, what hasn't come up in a while? And they tend to just like pick the same and repeat it again. So you can kind of get used to it, can have a bit of an inclination about what's going to be asked. But I suppose even if you don't know, have a guess. Don't leave anything blank. If you understand the question in Irish, you can kind of have a guess what the answer might be. Yeah, for sure. Uh, At the end of the exam, like you have your paper still, you can you know run through have I left anything blank just give it a guess you never know you might get it right that's so true never leave a blank on the exam you never know you'll get it you get it completely right like never yeah but like another Mm -hmm. thing I feel like it's definitely not true that you can't study or prepare at least for the listening exam and I'm going to plug another one of our podcasts now which is um, how to learn a language and in that one we talk about the importance of training your ear to a specific language so it's not just for Irish it's whatever subject you're studying or whatever language you're studying but the idea of like it doesn't feel particularly productive in the moment when you're listening to a language and not a lot of it is going in or you're not really understanding every single word but there is definitely value to sticking on Radio Nogaisita or TG Car or whatever it is like you you do get a mix of the dialects in the Kanun T in if you're watching TG Car as well you know you get Dahio Shea who's the thick Kerry accent but you might also get people from Connemara you know um so I know it's like daunting. No one really wants to stick on TG Car, <laughs> but um, you know, for the six months in the run up to your exam or whatever it is, like just do it every now and then. And it mightn't feel very productive, like I said, but you are training your ear. You are sort of just adjusting it to the Irish language, and it will make it easier at the end of the day or when you're doing the exam because you'll have practiced listening to the language. Whereas if you go into the exam with with only ever having heard Irish when you're sitting in that Irish class in school then it's it's not really going to be enough like you do have to put in a bit of extra work to try and listen to the language outside of school and outside of your um study another thing I want to say because I remember being told in school to watch like TG Cahar and I'd be like oh I don't I don't really want to watch TG Cahar when I could just like after I do my homework like I would just want to relax and not kind of have to pay attention to learning Irish from Spongebob you know um <laughs> <laughs> but and it's like this might go over the heads of people who are in school now but TG Cahar has had a program back in the day that's now up on its player this really cringy cheesy reality TV show called Passion Fashion it's so funny it's so <laughs> most amazing show it's, it's so weird <laughs> it's got loads of like early 2000s fashions but it's, it's like a dating show like it's it's ridiculous so if I I will say like that is like a really fun way of kind of telling yourself you study Irish if you watch this terrible Irish reality TV show from the from the early 2000s could you for those who don't know (laughs) I don't know what passion fashion is it's a guy who no it's three guys and one girl and they they meet the girl once I think and then the guys have to go off and go shopping they don't meet her at the beginning they don't they don't don't know what she looks like yeah (laughs) so what are they basing the fashion <laughs> anyway so the three lads have to go off shopping and they have to buy clothes for the girl based off nothing apparently no they do she gives a description of her style at the beginning i remember that now oh, i watched right. a lot of okay. episodes over lockdown okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway so at the end she tries tries on the three outfits and um, she doesn't she know which choose... lad has chosen which outfit for her yeah, yeah. And then she has to choose at the end based on which outfit she liked the most, um, who she goes on a date with. Yeah, and then she has to go on a date with some lad. Have you? You've never heard of this, have you, Isha? I think I've seen one episode before. I think that might have been my procrastination a day before one of the exams. I feel like I have seen it maybe <laughs> once before. Oh, but what God, a way to choose so a man. Funny. Yeah, but th- I'm not sure if that one's also on the player, Nessa, but there's the Pyuk de Ride, which oh is... Oh, my um, God, same, yeah. A si- same similar, format. similar concept, whereby um, there's three <laughs> girls who do a rally lap around a race course somewhere <laughs> in a rally car, and then the guy has to choose the girl based off who did the most impressive lap. Um, so those are both wonderful resources in Irish that you can go listen to and watch, which we highly and recommend. And you're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I say, yeah, like, even doing something ridiculous and fun like that your 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 brain is taking in the irish that's being spoken the whole time like i remember um that i had like that me i had watched like four episodes in one night and then i was just like starting to kind of do go back and then i was kind of wanting to like talk to people in irish i was just like because i'd only heard irish for like the last like two hours and i was like 
oh, this this is great. Like my brain was kind of taking in that information the whole time and it was getting used to the Irish again where like I feel like I haven't really spoken it since I was in school and having to do exams and stuff. So it like it totally helps. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And you can like subconsciously be training your ear in by listening to like the past exam papers, the arrow tapes from the past exam papers. And that's made really easy by study clicks. If you know, if you go into the question by topic page, just click into a topic there and, you know, um, you can literally just press play and listen away to yeah. um, one of the old recordings. And it's literally like the easiest thing ever. You can be doing jobs around your room. You can be making your bed in the morning. You can be out for a little walk. And you can click on one of the tapes, you know, even if you're not doing the questions, even if you're not answering questions, you're tuning your ear into people talking and getting used to the different voices and you're picking up more than you realize. Mm. And the other thing about practicing your listening is that I kind of find it like a nice little study break. So say, for example, like I was studying biology from three until seven and there was just loads happening, loads of definitions to learn um and a lot to take in you know the arrow is a really nice way to kind of break it up they're only about 30 minutes long so you get a whole one done 30 minutes that's your study done for 10 percent of your oral exam for 10 percent of your irish exam and you know it's a break from your biology study so you've got loads done you've had a break but you haven't had to sit there and learn a definition and learn piles and piles of essays do you know what i mean and it's 10 percent of your exam so twice the amount going for your poetry question which people spend you know hours and hours stressing over that's so true but like Irish but like the proportionate amount of time you spend preparing I didn't really realize that until after I did the leaving cert I was like why did I spend so much time doing that when there was so much more marks going for this but yeah I know that was one of the things my teacher in sixth year drilled into us she was like divide your time on two things based on two things like number one what you're best at so like don't spend loads of time on something you know you're brilliant at. You know, if, if you think you're amazing at your oral, yeah, 40% of your marks are going for it. But if you're already really good at it or if you go to a Gaelic school, if you think you're going to ace it anyway, there's no point in spending 40% of your time on it. But the other thing is base your study time on the percentage it's going for in the exam. So say everyone gets stressed about poetry, as I was saying, and learning about the filler. And learning about the poet's work and life and work and all this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, it's only 5% of your exam compared to, you know, the 10% going for your aerial exam and that you don't spend any time looking at. Um, so, you know, it's about putting things into perspective and, um, and, you know, I suppose that's the best way to look at it. Yeah, so moving on after that, paper one is literally just writing the essay. Um, so it goes by very quickly once you have the, the, um, the listening section done. What kind of tips do you have for us, Aoife, in terms of getting the essay done on time and getting the top marks? Yeah, I think I don't think timing is going to be an issue at all on paper one. You have so much time to write your essay. Like your listening is only 20 to 30 minutes, uh, really not much longer than that. So that doesn't take up a lot of time at all. So you have so much time to write your essay. So yeah, like I know paper two, you are a little bit pushed for time, but paper one, you know, you can relax. They're only really expecting about three or four pages. Like you can write more if you want. But yeah, you really don't have to stress over timing, I suppose, in this exam. But definitely try and finish within the time and a few minutes to spare so you can obviously look over your work and check your spelling and everything. Because spelling is actually very important in this part of the paper. So yeah, definitely be careful with your grammar, spelling, timing. But yeah, I think people find the essay really, really daunting just because just you can like learn off an essay on education and system and then say on the day, maybe the topic will come up on the exam, but they might change it slightly. So they might only ask you the second level education system in Ireland and they can make them really specific. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like maybe a few years ago, the questions were more general, but you know, in the last few years, you know, the state exam are moving away from these really specific questions and moving away from wanting students to write off a learned off question. So yeah, like if you're not great at coming up with stuff on the spot, yeah, it is your only option to learn something off. But my main tip here would be to prepare topics and vocab related to those topics and sentences related to the topics and learn them rather than learning off a full essay. Because sitting down with a four page essay, I don't know about you, but that's just <laughs> impossible in my mind. Yeah. You'd be driven demented learning off 10 four page essays and then they mightn't even come up and then you're going to stress even more so I know a lot of people one of my best friends actually she um went into the exam and she read the question slightly wrong and she thought it was I think it was to do with uh homelessness 
but she thought it meant poverty so she wrote a po- um, general essay on poverty but because she even she, even though she wrote a good essay about poverty and there was stuff about homelessness in it the examiner knew she hadn't understood the question so she ended up getting she got docked a lot of marks so yeah I recommend actually checking out the study clicks flashcards. I actually wrote these ones and there's loads of connecting phrases and linking phrases which are really good for your essay if something comes up that you haven't fully prepared. Um and these and these connecting sentences can really help you, you know, tie together paragraphs you've learned of rather than, you know, having to write a full essay and having to be totally fluent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Like those flashcards are brilliant. But it's funny, like myself and Nessa, the last podcast we did was a Q&A episode. And we literally got asked that question, like, how do you recommend learning off essays? And we said essentially the, the exact same thing that you said there, like you, the time that you are going to spend memorizing 10 plus essays is a lot more time than you would spend just learning key phrases and spending the time trying to improve your grammar so that you actually know how to just form an essay without having to learn off the whole thing word for word um so definitely that like I know and we were saying like uh, if if it just isn't your thing that it is hard to just kind of say oh well it's very easy for you guys to say just learn the language like it's not easy for everyone but um I still believe like the the time you would spend memorizing it is still going to be more than the time you would spend just learning off key phrases per topic you know? yeah for sure yeah it's just not worth the stress of the of the choice not maybe not even coming up like yeah you would you would spend so much time trying to memorize yeah and it's the same for french it's the same for spanish whatever you're doing when you think about it three pages three to four pages and you have to write an introduction to every essay you have to write a conclusion to every essay most of the time the introduction can be half a page conclusion can be half a page you know you can have really general introductions and conclusions but you can use over and over again between essays um so that will kind of work in every single essay and that's like already a page and a bit gone and same as for a debate you have the same opening the same closing and you know you've already written loads and you're not expected to write that much overall so you have a lot done already before you even start writing and answering the question do you know what I mean I suppose it's kind of one of those things you have the choice to do a short story as well I think everyone's kind of told don't go near them because mm-hmm. it's really hard to get marks in them. So yeah, we were told don't go near Such it. Such a baller move going I for know, the short story. <laughs> but yeah, I think it is quite difficult to pick up marks in it. So I think you have to be really, really fluent in Irish to do well in that one. So yeah, I would avoid that one. Yeah. The debate is a nice one. I think I liked the b- debate one because you can choose a side. You have a nice opening. You can address the audience loads. The one thing about Irish is it's different to French. It's different to your other foreign languages because they're expecting you to be, you know, answer a question like you would in English you know Mm. use your connecting phrases phrase things nicely use proverbs um not to have sentences that are kind of not connected um so yeah that is a challenge at this but like at the same time in a debate you have to take those skills you have from English and use them in Irish so and it's actually not that bad and it's not that bad when you actually start doing it. I suppose one of the things is practice. I personally wouldn't say it's a good idea to, you know, learn off a te- an essay given to you by your teacher. I think it's much better to write your own, even like short essays, if you have them, short essays on very specific topics. Just write one page essays about very specific topics, like, for example, one tiny part of the health system or a tiny scandal in the health system and you never know that could work in a random essay or you know there might be an essay about a general essay about problems in Ireland or something um so yeah if you do it yourself you're again subconsciously learning because um you might have three or four sample essays open in front of you there's loads on study click so I know I use these ones and then you combine those ones with another essay. So you have all these different notes in front of you and you're reading them all, you're learning them all, and then you're combining all of them and writing an essay. So you've actually subconsciously learned and you've written an essay. Yeah. And like if, if you have to memorize something, you're going to remember something that you wrote yourself better than something that someone else wrote. Yeah. So like if at the end of the day you really feel like your only way is to memorize something, then you're better off at least first writing out an essay that you've put together yourself as opposed to just literally copying. Yeah, 100 percent. Um, and examiners know straight away if you've copied off an essay or learned off an essay. There are some grind schools out there. And a lot of students will, you know, write the exact same essay and it's going to be very obvious to an examiner. And it is kind of risky. Um 
because like there is a good chance that you and three people in the same room as you will have the same essay written and you know if you're the examiner correcting papers are you going to give the best grade to someone who has written the same essay as someone else or someone who might have more simple Irish but you know has added personal opinion has uses has used like personal examples or anecdotes or something like that you know for example in the health system if you're talking about the health system you might give a personal anecdote you might talk about your grandmother give your opinion on the health system make a personal and the examiner is going to be more interested in what you have to say um but usually when it's personal it's easier to actually talk about you know in irish we're all used to talking about ourselves and talking in the i form so if you're not that good at irish or if you don't feel like irish is your strong point you know talk in the personal um you know, talk about yourself, give your opinion. And, you know, not only does it sound brilliant, but it's actually easy to talk about. So that sums up paper one. Um, moving on to paper two, which is mostly stuff that you've done in advance, like the poetry and um, the prose and all that. But it first starts off with the comprehensions, which I think is kind of like a good way of easing you into it. So uh, do you want to talk us through the comprehensions and maybe little tips for it, Eva? Yeah, sure. So the comprehensions are actually a lot more important than you think. So there's two of them. They, they're the first two questions on paper two, so they're the kind of first two things you'll be doing. And they're actually worth 50 marks each, which is 100 marks in total, which is actually half of your whole paper two are these two comprehensions. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. And they're really, really not difficult at all, but they do take a lot of practice to get used to doing them quickly because, as I've said before, paper two, you are pushed for time, so you need to get these done as soon as possible. So yeah, you are pushed for time, so you want to get these done so you can you know, finish them and move on to the rest of your stuff. Um, there is a lot of writing in them. So there's six questions all together. Question one to five are general questions based on the text and you literally copy and paste the answer straight from the text. You don't have to change the words. Um, you literally just copy and paste from the text. It's so simple. Just find the word in the question, find that word in the text and usually that's the answer. But yeah, obviously just be very careful there that you're using the correct part of the text to answer the question. And don't just think because it says one word in the question and one word in the text that that is the exact answer. Yeah, so, um, yeah, obviously just timing is really important here. So, you know, some people do go down the path of, you know, highlighting the answer in the text and then rewriting that. I actually found that wasted a lot of time. So, um, yeah, uh, usually if you just stick your finger beside the answer in the text and then just copy that and write as quickly as you can. So it's that easy. It's... um. It is just about flying through question one to five and then moving on to question six. So question six has two parts, part A and B. Um, yeah, obviously parts one to five have two parts as well, but question six is slightly different. So part A in question six is a grammar question. So it's finding a Sarah Breher in the text or Sarah Breher, I'm sure, Katja, something like that. Identify that in the text or it might be the Tishal Ginnadoc, which again is very difficult. It's quite a complicated grammar tense. But try your best with it. But as I said, it's not worth that many marks. It's only one tiny part of the question. So don't worry about it too much. Um, question 6B is the one that everyone stresses about because it always says at the end, I the oko fein, which just means in your own words, which a lot of people do get stressed out about because you have to show that you understand the whole text and give an opinion and you can talk about it. But, you know, it's literally four lines. It doesn't have to be long. Try your best. Give your personal opinion. Use... um use your you know opinion phrases and um, they're all in the study clicks um, flashcards you can also find sample answers for question 6b uh, underneath the question on the questions by topic page on study clicks but um yeah so you can kind of get an idea of what's expected of you but usually the questions end up being quite similar for this you know it's always about why do you think the author wrote this text or this article um you know give your opinion about this thing in the article or give two pieces of information about something so um, describe two traits of, you know, they do kind of repeat themselves. So, you know, you're going to be using your opinion phrases mm -hmm. like imahoram, darlam, whatever the case may be, you know, try your best, use your, um, use your own words. Don't just copy from the text. Yeah, you can reference, but I wouldn't directly quote from the text. Um, and yeah, you'll be awarded for, you know, giving your own opinion about something. Um, and I yeah. feel like, Lave teachings are something that you practice loads in class anyway and the more you do of those like yeah those opinion ones can be really daunting but like the more you do them again with everything you're using a lot of the same phrases again and you can learn how to kind of reword some of the stuff like you're not taking from it directly but you're kind of putting what's already in the text into your own words 
and yeah basically you'll be doing loads of practicing loads of those in class and you'll just you'll just get used to it so there's no need to be like more worried about it than you need to be no it's not something you need to stress over at all because it's homework homework for this is your study you do them for homework all the time that is your study so like for this in this sense this homework is so important because this is your study for 50 percent of paper two it's so easy five out of six Mm. questions you're copying straight from the text and then one part of one question you're giving a little personal opinion but at the end of the day it's not that bad for 100 marks for as many marks as your whole essay and think of all the stress of your essay and then this is the same amount of marks you know really does put things into perspective and um, so after the capador you get into the the amnaha stuff the stuff that you've prepared already so what's next up after um after you do the leif tishkins so then you move on to your prose which is question two well, you have two options for your prose. Now, most people choose prose anamnaha, which is part A. Um, there is a part B, which is prose raunach. Most people don't do this. Your teacher will tell you which one you're doing, but I feel like most people do prose um, anamnaha instead of prose raunach. So prose anamnaha is your herlimabok, gnarrod, oshinadirnanog, dish, kakamelish. So there's five of them. Now, one comes up every year. Um, I know there are some changes for the 2021 exams. Um, just because of the students missing school a bit. So I think they have the choice between two um, prose texts and there's two questions will come up. So you choose one. So only one comes up on the day, usually apart from 2021. So um, it's worth 30 marks. So usually it's one question. Sometimes it comes up as a two part question. So two 15 markers. Um, and for all the stress that's going into this question, reading the text, learning the characters, learning the story, learning the vocab, it's actually only worth 5% of your exam overall. The whole entire Irish grade, it's only 5%, which like, it really isn't that much. At the end of the day, you know, you have to decide, is it worth all this stress? You know, try your best. The questions generally tend to be the same year on year. I know Anganarod has never come up. I think there's a bit of conspiracy about that people don't know why it's never appeared yet everyone thought it was going to come up in 2019 when I did the exams but it didn't actually make an appearance but you know that's not to say it won't ever come up but yeah it is a little bit suspicious that it's never been seen on the paper before something about the author I think wasn't it they he did some dodgy stuff I think and they don't want to yeah (laughs) I don't think it was actually the author of Gnarwood I think it was the author of um I think there's another set of stories that some people do in the Rownock um something like that I'm not sure but um I think the other author did something a bit sketchy so yeah I don't know oh that yeah, might have maybe been it'll come up one day it? anyway yeah yeah I think that's the one. Oh yeah yeah, yeah I don't know we'll see mm. but you never know it could come up we still need to study for it because you know going off any other subject or any other prediction if it hasn't appeared it's kind of likely to come up this year but um again we can't say for sure but yeah so there's five of them if one has come up last year chances are it's not going to come up this year so you know it's kind of four that you need to study in depth and then again you know you can make your predictions um but yeah but as I said the questions do tend to be quite repetitive in this section usually they're about a character or some event in the story um so knowing the events of the story having the facts to back up your points knowing the storyline that's just an absolute must and then obviously your characters um, and traits of the characters are really important too and then also you know there's kind of nuances depending on the actual text so I know for Ushin you need to know the traits of scale to Bela dish so you're kind of storytelling back at that time so it kind of depends on the text but again it's not that bad 30 marks five percent you know nothing to be stressed about you know if you're finding it very difficult yeah same goes for cockamillish isn't it that you have to know um like the the camera techniques and like film techniques and things camera like that. techniques so yeah filming techniques worth knowing the extra bits i was just gonna say that over the summer we were working with um an irish teacher and she was helping us break down some of the essays we have on the site the sample answers and she was going through what was good and maybe not so great about them and obviously none of the essays on the side are bad, but she did point out that some of the essays are missing. You know, if there, it's a film, you need to talk about filming techniques um, or techniques that were used in the film that add to the suspense or, you know, help heighten the sense of tension. You know, in your Ocean of Dear No questions, you need to talk about the traits of Shkeltabela that 
or whatever it was she was saying you need to it's not just about telling the story it's about backing it up with facts from the story and talking about how the story is told so again it's bringing your skills from English in as much as you can um if you want to get top marks in this question but yeah and of course spelling is important here too but I suppose knowing the events of the story knowing the facts and knowing the characters and then summing it up with simple language is you know will get you your marks I feel as well like the work the way you prepare for that is your teacher sets work for you in class there's not really any kind of studying that you do for it your teacher kind of prepares you for that section really well by like just setting homework where you have to describe people like um did you do her llama book Eva? yeah we did can i interrupt with a fun fact about her llama book <laughs> go on of course so I remember studying this and being like, I felt this, this way about like 80% of the pros Anaha, Amnaha. But I was like, what the hell is this? I knew it was like an excerpt from like a book. And the whole thing was just describing Lachine and like Lachine is Farfa and all this. And I was just like, this is such a weird book. I need more like to write yeah. about this in the exam. I need more context. So I checked it out of the library and I read the full book. I thought I thought it might help me, you know, I thought it might be better for the Irish thing. Do you want to know what happens in the rest of that book? <laughs> Please. It, it it takes a turn. I feel like I've been told this before, <laughs> but... It takes a really weird turn. So Lachin and the husband, Paul, they go off to Istanbul for their some, I don't know, is it some anniversary or something? <laughs> and they die in a car bomb. Jeez. Oh my God. Yeah, it gets <laughs> so dark. And like the rest of the story is about the son and... Ruan and Kuan, I think. And so they're like, and he's not even that sad. Or, <laughs> it's yeah. Bizarre. Are. oh god loads of those like i we had to do gotha um <laughs> and it's all like again you read like the first eight chapters and it's about um a young guy who gets into like the drug scene in dublin i think and you like the first the only bit that you're supposed to read for the course is just like his mom basically worrying about him and finding out that he's doing this blah 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 and then you don't read anymore they basically tell you to like stop at chapter eight but if you keep reading in the end like it turns out that like the dr- the gang lords and the drug lords basically um kill him and like send his head in a bag back to the mom like why These is that on the irish very, syllabus very, very for us teenagers it's we did crazy two TUI, i think what? one was called you ming a and claire's despair i don't know did you guys do oh, those yeah. ones but i remember the whole class were just in stitches laughing because you know this was the strangest thing uh, and it's on the curriculum for transition year Irish or whatever. Um, or like even Ganara, the ending, everyone was so shocked. They were like, I was not expecting that to happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they are a little bit strange. I think even Call Camilla, people were nearly getting sick in class watching it. It was very, very strange and very disgusting. It's just like, I imagine like the SEC boardroom and it's just like, right guys, we used to decide what's going to be on the Leaving Star curriculum and it's just like, how about this? So it's like, no, it's not deranged and really, really dark. It doesn't belong in the curriculum. <laughs> Move on. Yep, that's it. There needs to be at least one death. <laughs> there needs to be one suspicious death. <laughs> Uh, oh anyway but like i i feel like most of the stuff on the pro there are like a lot of what, what you've just said on the pros you can kind of translate over to the the next section which is poetry obviously it's a bit different than the poems are a lot shorter but in terms of like it's the, the way you write it is almost the same or the, the type of questions that come up like it's usually always about a theme or about an image yeah. and then once you know once you practice and study that thing it's it's kind of the same process isn't yeah it, really? exactly it's basically the same again these only go for five percent of your overall grade so it's again not that much and people still really stress over it even though it's only worth the smallest percent of your grade and even if you only got half marks in this question you've still got 2.5 percent you know you're only lost out 2.5 percent so yeah there's nothing to stress over the one thing i will say is that 30 mark question nearly always unless it's spalpine which we don't know the filler is um if it's any of the other four poems, nearly always a question is on the poet and that's where it nine marks and it's the easiest nine marks you'll ever get because you literally just learn it off. A little paragraph about the life and work of the poet and it's so predictable, it comes up nearly every year. And the great thing about the poetry question is, you know, they're even easier than the prose question because they're actually a lot easier because they're so predictable. Um, the questions repeat themselves year on year. You know, on Tarek here, every single time that comes up they always ask about images because um the poem is full of images if it's about you know if it's the question on Kolskara um because it's kind of a storytelling poem they always ask about the events of the poem Gavin 
um, there's a big contrast in the poem. Um, you know, how the poet um, is kind of represented by the animal. Um, that always gets asked. So if you scroll back the years, you'll literally find that the questions do end up repeating themselves over and over again. So the same questions are coming up year on year. It's easy to predict and it's really not that bad when you break it down. Obviously your teacher is probably, and I know my teacher did, we were given this like massive booklet for each poem and there was so much information, so many new words, but at the end of the day, the questions are similar, know the vocab, know how to say metaphor, know how to say contrast in Irish, know the vocab, know the story of the poem and you're kind of good to go. And again, add those connector phrases in, like I was saying for the essay, have the connecting phrases ready, know how to say at the beginning of the poem, Know that when you say egg tus on dawn, you have to use the Tishal mm. Ginnadoc and put an I in dawn because, yeah, that's where you'll lose your marks. And it's these connecting phrases, the introduction, the conclusion that you can use over and over again. So there's actually a lot more you can prepare for these than you think. Amazing. So then you moved on to question four, which is your literate Brescia, which are worth slightly more than your poetry and your prose. So these are worth 40 marks, so about 67% of your overall grade. So again, everyone usually does a different text. I did on trail. Um, you know, some people do Tori Lecht Yerma the August Grania, Gaffa, Canary Wharf, A Higna Hit or um uh, Dawn to Russia, which I think are five more poems. I personally didn't want five more poems after question three, so I didn't go near this one. But yeah, I did on trail. It's a little bit longer than the other ones. I suppose it is a little bit daunting when you start this um question because, you know, we had to buy the text of the play and we were thinking, you know, how on earth am I going to read all this? It's a full book. But if you can get a summary of it, you know, get your hands on a summary, know the key points, know the key moments, know the characters, and then just, it's basically the same as prose. Answer it the same way. Tell the story of the text in your answer, reference techniques, reference the characters, you know, use quotation if you can, and it's not that bad. That's good. I remember we did the poems, actually, the extra poems. Like our teacher was just like, oh, I don't want you learning anything else. The poems are better. I don't think we really, we didn't really get a say in it. Did you get like to choose yourself or was it like your your teacher kind of guided you? Um, so our teacher... Our whole school did on trail, but I know a few of my friends did grounds outside school and they, their teacher kind of encouraged them to do the dawn to Brescia because apparently they're a lot easier, but they might be easier. I'm sure they might've been easier, but I suppose on the day, um, I think what happened was the poem that the grand teacher said was going to come up didn't end up coming up. Oh, so I think no. for me, I was just a bit <laughs> scared that one of the Dons of Russia that I had studied wasn't going to come up. So that's why I was yeah. happy to stick with Ontario because it was just a little bit more predictable. I could have moved, got the notes for the other poems and done it myself. But I think I was happy enough to stick with Ontario. Um, and the thing about Ontario is um, it's different to Deesh or Cockamilch where nothing's really happening. You know, a lot is happening in Ontario and it is more interesting. It's very sad, isn't it? I think I went to see a play of it. Yeah, so it's basically about this girl who... She gets pregnant um, and the dad is a married man. And at the time, obviously, in Ireland, that was, you know, number one, unheard of. But also, number two, the worst thing you could ever, ever do. At the time, mm. it was a sin. The church had such a big role in society at the time. Um, so it's kind of about society at the time. She was thrown out of her home. She yeah. had to move to Dublin and work in a factory by herself. Um, and loads of other stuff happens basically but yeah I don't want to ruin it in case you know, no one has read the story yet but yeah it actually is interesting it is a lot more you know interesting than the others Um, you actually might enjoy it <laughs> as far as enjoying learning a text can go for leaving cert but when it is interesting I actually feel like you remember more I feel like remember like for Deesh nothing's really happening the whole story Um, it's literally just describing two people whereas like you know um and then you finish it and you're like wait what did that even what even happened nothing happened i don't know what to learn um i hated dish so much i to this i, I still <sighs> don't understand what happened like why was the clock ticking why was he did he even listen <laughs> was she pregnant or wasn't she pregnant i have no like i still have no idea i can't believe it's still on the curriculum i know, I know. and you have to like find all these <laughs> hidden meanings yeah <laughs> And you're like trying to find metaphors and hidden meanings and you're like, there is nothing, nothing happened. But yeah, I suppose on the day of the exam, 
you have to just pretend you know your stuff and find tell the examiner that you loved it you found it so interesting and exciting and I'm sure the examiner <laughs> found it riveting too can you imagine if the author <laughs> was listening oh. apologies to the author oh no <laughs> we start getting hate mail <laughs> sorry but is that it then for paper two that's it on paper two yeah I know again as I said timing is it is tight for time on paper two there is a lot to do two lay fishkins they're long you're writing three essays on you know a poem and two texts um and your poetry you know you say it's one question but there's actually three questions within your poetry sometimes there's two questions within your prose so yeah it does sound like a lot but just divide your time based on how the marks are allocated now I actually don't think you need half of the exam for the lay fishkins I think you could get them done a lot quicker um, and again as I said practice you'll get faster as the more you practice um, and obviously spend a little bit more time on your literary expression because your answer is expected to be slightly longer than your poetry just because it is worth more marks um, so I think the order I did it in was Lay Fishkins, um, because obviously that's worth a lot of marks. Then I did Filioct because I found that was kind of quick and easy to do because it was quite predictable. And then I moved on to prose and then literary expression. So yeah, I hope that, you know, breaking that down, people are listening that, you know, it sounds a little bit less daunting uh, when you break the whole exam down by percentage. Uh, I know that's how I got my head around it that's how I studied for it because you know I didn't go to a Gaelic school I didn't go to a Gaelic school primary school I learned Irish from scratch um I didn't really have you know well my mom is a primary school teacher but at the same time her level of Irish wouldn't have been anywhere near what was expected of us at leaving cert so I suppose I didn't have all the help at home that maybe other people did so I did it totally independently so I broke it down in kind of such a way that I could manage it um and get through the paper and not feel like I was totally out of my comfort zone so I found that breaking it down by percentage finding the areas that were important knowing how to study for those areas how to study for the unstudyable questions um and that really helped me do well I think yeah, yeah I think that's so impressive actually because I feel like I owe a lot to the fact that like I got good results in Irish in the leaving side and I owe that to the fact that I went to a Wales school like and like you just you're doing all your other subjects in Irish too by English of course and that like having that additional stuff does really help so all that advice coming from you from like someone who just kind of self-taught like did like all the extra bit yourself immersing yourself in the language and you managed to get the top marks that's kind of like what other people need to hear if they're struggling yeah and that's not to say that if people listening are in the Gwail talked um that you know or if they live in Gaelic areas, or if they go to a Gael school, um, that's still not to say that the Irish exam is still oh, no, easy. There's still a lot yeah. in it. There's still a lot to learn. There's still an essay. You still have to, you know, learn a lot. But no matter what level of Irish you have, the, there's still a lot in the exam. You still have to know how to approach it. But breaking it down, I think, is the best way to do it, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that affects both um, Gael school and non Gael school students is vocab and grammar because obviously vocab and grammar for non-Gael school students is easy already but then for Gael school students or at least like our experience I'm not sure unless you agree but I think it's like um when you're speaking it from a young age you don't actually learn it properly so you end up with this kind of like mishmash not actually correct and you'll get dot marks for using it like spelling being That's wrong true. or like not properly knowing the Tishli Guinea look and things like that so we were always hammered down on for that yeah. in school because we did we never actually properly learned that until like sixth year um so like what what would you have done what were your top tips for both learning vocab and grammar because I think like that's something that's a very universal struggle and not something that everyone really understands how to get a proper grasp on the grammar and how to how to just keep on top of learning the vocab because there's so many words yeah for sure so I did go to the Gwail talk a couple of times and I found that same as you you know you when you're kind of speaking it all the time you get a little bit lazy with it I suppose we said mwid a lot um instead of saying conic amur in like the we form in the past mm. tense we just said conic mwid which again is totally wrong so in Irish then I'd be writing conic mwid and then my teacher would be saying mm. you know why are you doing that that's not right that's not proper grammar and I was lucky enough in first year to have a really really good Irish teacher who taught us grammar really really well um and she taught us just like the tenses, I'm sure Katja, I'm sure Loch, I'm sure Loyerock, I'm sure Oshinok, 
um, your Cerebri here, your Moconilock, the things you use over and over again. And the quicker and the better you are at using those, the better you will be at Irish. You know, there's hardly a sentence that goes by that you don't use a verb in. So knowing your verbs, knowing the meanings of different verbs um, is really important. Like they love that on the Irish exam to use you know, instead of saying one kind of simple verb, they might use a slightly different verb that means the same thing just to catch you out. But if you know the meanings of your verbs and you know them really well, um, you know, you won't uh, fall down there. Yeah, so obviously your verbs are really important, but I suppose you've been kind of learning them since junior cert. Like a lot of the um, junior cert paper is kind of testing, you know, your general knowledge of grammar and um, verbs and stuff. So, you know, if anyone's listening who's doing the junior cert at the moment, um, you know, I would really, you know, recommend to learn your most basic grammar at Leaving Cert. You're not being, you know, they're not looking for you to have like fluent Irish at all. Like, you know, there wouldn't be an exam if they thought everyone was fluent in Irish. You're not, you're not expected to be fluent, but they are expecting you to have like the basic grammar, good level of vocabulary. And, you know, if you write simple, correct sentences, you will get your marks. And then if you always use your simple grammar and then throw in a nice phrase or a nice simple bit of, or a nice piece of vocab, um, that will really up your marks because it will look really impressive. You know, practicing writing your essays for your Capdora section, practicing writing them yourself, um, you'll actually pick up a lot of vocab from doing that. Reading other people's Irish is also uh, really great. You know, in terms of vocab, I think I read, so what I did was I read the scripts of all the listening exams after I'd practiced each one. Um, I'd highlight the words I didn't understand um, and learn that way. You know, there's apps online that you can make quiz sets or you can do flashcards um, with different pieces of vocab um, and you can test yourself that way. You know, in the Lay Pishkind, if there's a word you don't know, highlight it, pop it in a vocab copy um, and you can get good at your vocab that way. Um, so yeah, they're kind of my tips for grammar and vocab. And I think that if you combine the two, you know, you're in a good place. Yeah, I think a good practice that you can like include your friends in as well if they're willing. Like I know some people are like, oh, I don't want to speak Irish to my friends. But like um, what I found is was really cool for learning languages was if I wanted to get to that level where like I felt like I could talk like myself and I wasn't just talking like someone, a robot writing an essay um, is instead of writing to them in English, I would write to them in Irish or even like I might write to them in English, but at the same time, I'll have my notebook next to me and I'll try writing it down in Irish on the notebook and see this sentence that I usually say to my friend, which is totally colloquial and exactly normal as, as I would speak in English. Can I say that same thing in Irish? And the goal was always to be able to speak the same way in Irish that I speak in English. And you you realize very quickly what you do and don't know when you try and do it that way. And then like kind of like the same as reading the transcripts, like every time you reach a word that you don't know, you write it down. And it's the same for grammar. Like if you don't know how to say in front of the or whatever. Then you go and learn it. You go learn that you need to include the Tishy Ginnadag or if it's relevant or whatever. Yeah. So um, you find what works for you, I suppose. But I think definitely that that vocab, having a vocab book is really important. And like you said, the verbs are really important, especially the irregular ones. Yeah, definitely. And I know, like, obviously, with the pandemic at the moment, there was no Gwell Talks in 2020. But if you do get the opportunity to go to the Gwell Talks or if you do have the opportunity to do Irish grinds, or if there's someone in your family that can speak Irish, by all means, talk to them. You know, the more you speak it, the better you get, the quicker it comes, the more natural it sounds. And remember, like, I know we haven't talked that much about the oral exam, but that is 40% of your marks. It's a huge amount of your marks. You need to be comfortable speaking Irish if you want to do well in the exam or, you know, get a H1 in the exam. And actually, one thing that I find really funny about the Irish exam you get more marks for reading your poem in the oral exam than you do for writing about it (laughs) in paper two so you get more marks for reading the poem than writing about it and you know some people don't even practice reading the poems even though that's worth 40 marks um or 35 marks I think it's 35 marks um but yeah it's combining all of your knowledge, you know, combine what you already know, figuring out what you don't know, and then focusing on that and trying to improve that way. I think that's the best strategy and approach, I think. Yeah, and like that's a lot. And just like summarizing it there, it does seem like a lot. I'm kind of like, geez, if I had to go back and do all of that now, that's a lot to cover. But I, I think, you know, the, the way that you broke it down and that that is the key, just like breaking everything down. Obviously, don't try to tackle everything no. in one go. It is something that... um you know, this is going to be released in October. So if you're listening to it in six years, you still have plenty of time. Um, 
if you're listening to it a bit later, um, it might be a bit late to start from scratch now. Yeah. But like, um, you know, if you are listening in October, then do take take the advice now to like start now um, because it's not something that's easy to cram. And no. it goes with every language subject. Like you just can't really cram language subjects. It's something that you need to put in a lot of time over a long period of time. Yeah. And the thing about languages is, it's not something obviously you can learn overnight it's not something you can really cram for the night before oh well, obviously you can cram for like the key moments in a story or key pieces of information about a poet but you can't really study it overnight so it is about you know kind of slow and steady strategy mm. but at the same time they're not expecting you to know absolutely everything like I've said this before if you knew everything they wouldn't be testing you on it so they're not going to expect you to know every single word um you haven't studied it in college yet so don't think that you need to know absolutely everything but know what's relevant know um know your basics and then build on that um and that's all they're looking for at the end of the day um so i think that pretty much covers it um i don't think i have anything else to add i think you kind of really summed up nicely Eva, and kind of like really like like Emer said broke it down really well because after listening to this whole podcast, you'd be like, oh my goodness, that is so much. But seeing, having heard it all broken down like that um, really does make it sound so much more manageable. Um, so I'd say we'll let you go. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being on the podcast, Aoife. It was, it's so nice having another guest on and listening to your expertise. <laughs> and no problem. Thanks for having we'll me. We'll see if we can get you on another time. Um. Yes, Aoife is an expert in more than one subject, so she'll be back on, on another podcast to give more excellent tips. <laughs> exactly. Before we go, a reminder that you can leave a review for the podcast. Give it five stars on the iTunes store if you have the time. Leave a nice review. It would make our day. Um, if you have any suggestions or questions for us, you can email info at StudyClicks or you can reach us through any of the our social media so we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on snapchat we're on twitter and excitingly we're now on tiktok it's the first time i can say this and um, probably not the best platform for messaging us but um definitely follow us on all the social medias that you have great way of staying in touch and having like the study tips and just general fun stuff so yeah that's yep, it that's it that's um, another podcast done and dusted. Thanks again so much, Aoife, for joining us. And stay tuned. Everyone who's listening will be back with another podcast um, soon. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.